Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting system of equations. We have x squared plus y squared equals 1 and ax plus by equals 1. And we want to have a single solution from this system. So we want to have a unique solution or I guess you can call it one solution. In order to get a one solution from the system, what should be the values of a and b? So that's what we're looking for, and I'll be presenting two methods. And I think you're gonna love this problem. Anyways, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is pretty much straightforward, right? That would be, guess what? Substitution. So go ahead and isolate the y from the first equation. First, subtract ax from both sides, and then divide both sides by b, to get the y by itself, right? And why are we doing this? Because we want to substitute this into the other equation. This method is called substitution and pretty common with systems. Now, we were able to get y, but can b be zero? That would be a good question. Now think about it. If b is zero in the second equation, that means a x equals one, which means x equals one over a. And if you plug in 1 over a into the first equation, you are supposed to get two values of y or maybe one value, who knows, right? But you kind of need to test it out. And we can do that towards the end if we have some time left. But I want to proceed with the solution because the solution is, I think, really, really cool. So once we got the y by itself, we can go ahead and plug it into the first equation, which is the quadratic version, right? Or the quadratic one. Now let's go ahead and replace y with this, 1 minus ax over b, and that's actually going to give us a quadratic equation in a single variable. This is nice and a huge improvement because if you look at the original equation or one of the original equations, you notice that there are two variables and solving it is nearly impossible, right? There are infinitely many solutions. But we have a condition, now we have a single variable, and let's go ahead and solve it. How do you solve it? Just go through the motions, simplify. If you square one minus ax, you're gonna be getting one plus a squared x squared minus two ax. You know, I kind of rever uh, reverse the process a little bit. Divide by b squared, and that is equal to one. You can go ahead and multiply everything by b squared to get rid of the fractions. That's gonna give you the following. b squared x squared plus one plus a squared x squared minus two ax. Notice that here, b squared cancels out and then on the right hand side you get b squared let's go ahead and put everything on the same side while rearranging the terms so that we can kind of make it a full quadratic notice that we have two terms with x squared so i can kind of write it as a squared plus b squared that's the coefficient of x squared and then i have my x term minus 2ax and 1 minus b squared if i subtract it that's going to be my constant set it equal to zero and you're good to go I mean, we're not finished, but at least you're on your way to the solution. Now, this is a quadratic equation, and if you solve it with the quadratic formula, you're going to get something that looks complicated. You don't need to do that because we're not being asked to solve the system. We're kind of like solving the system or manipulating it such that it has a single solution, but we're not really solving, solving the equation, okay? Or solve, solving, whatever. Here's what we need to look at. Remember the initial condition we want a single solution, right? If you want a single solution from the system, we do want a single solution from this quadratic because if you get two x values, think about it. Plug it in, you're probably gonna get more than two y values, who knows, right? Depending on the x values, of course. But let's go ahead and solve this equation. We want this equation to have a single solution, correction, we're not solving it. We want the discriminant to be zero because as you know, or you should know, if discriminant is zero, then the quadratic equation has one solution, or you can call that a repeated root. Great, so what is delta? What is discriminant? B squared minus 4ac. In other words, b squared is gonna be 4a squared minus four times a squared plus b squared, that's the coefficient of x squared, which replaces a in the original quadratic, times c, right? b squared minus 4ac. c is one minus b squared, which is our constant. And remember, delta is supposed to be zero. By the way, that looks like a triangle, but that's actually delta. It's a Greek letter. 
Do you know the lowercase delta? This is uppercase delta. It's really weird. It's used in limits and it looks very different from this. Anyways, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can kind of look it up, okay? Now, um, you can easily find it and you probably already know. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything that is being subtracted on the right hand side, which is a little easier uh, to solve for. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. I'm going to get a squared minus a squared b squared plus b squared minus b to the fourth. Uh oh, that looks like a pretty complicated equation, doesn't it? But go ahead and divide by 4 and you immediately realize, hopefully, that a squared can be canceled out. Yes, we got 0. Beautiful. Now, what should we do with this? Let's go ahead and factor as much as possible and set it equal to 0 and see what happens. I want to start with this. b squared minus a squared b squared minus b to the fourth equals 0. And then from here, I can take out b squared. That's nice. 1 minus a squared minus b squared equals 0. Now, this gives us two results. Either b squared equals 0, which implies b is equal to 0, or a squared, 1 minus a squared minus b squared equals 0, which means a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Now, let's go ahead and focus on the second one, but also see what happens with this um, first solution, b equals 0. Now, remember at the beginning we talked about it, right? We were dividing both sides by b, and we didn't want b to be 0, and if b was 0, we would get x equals 1 over a. So you can kind of go ahead and plug it in, like if x is equal to 1 over a and b is equal to 0, remember those conditions, you can go ahead and plug it in and you're going to get 1 over a squared plus y squared equals 1. And then from here, if you isolate y squared, you're going to get something like this, which turns into something like this. Now, you want a single y value from here because we are supposed to have a single solution as an xy ordered pair. And obviously, in this case, that can only happen if this is equal to what? Zero? Or is it another y value? I'm going to leave that open anyways and switch over to the second method because seven second, <laughs> did I say seventh? Second method, don't worry, I'm not going to give you seven methods. I never did, maybe in the future. But the second method is as follows. So we have a system, again, remember the problem. We have this interesting system. And again, after the second method, I'm going to show you something that is really cool. Actually, more than one thing. So now, here's the hocus pocus. If x squared plus y squared equals 1, you know what that's calling for? It's calling for trigonometric substitution. Isn't that amazing? Trigonometry is beautiful and it actually helps us solve a lot of good problems in algebra. And guess what? Geometry helps us some, solve some algebra or uh, trigonometry problems. They all help each other out. They're very helpful. Okay, nice people. So now, we're going to go ahead and plug this in. But notice that if you plug it into the second equation, you get something super weird, right? A sine alpha plus B cosine alpha equals 1. What does that mean? We have too many variables. Crazy. Okay, don't worry about it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on something super special. Go ahead and add A squared plus B squared and square root it. And then take it out of the equation. Why? I'll tell you in a little bit. I know this information is kind of... This information is kind of fast forwarded, but I'll show you. And this is a really cool strategy that's often used. And I know some people are still going to say, ah, oh, this is trivial. I mean, come on. If you did a PhD in mathematics or prepared for math competitions, pretty much everything is trivial for you, right? I mean, but not for everyone. Anyways, once you take out the square root of a squared plus b squared, you get the stuff inside the parentheses. And guess what? These values can be... Uh, associated with trigonometry one more time. is That's the beauty of trigonometry. So call this cosine beta. And you're going to find out that this is equal to sine beta because if you square these two things and add them up, you're going to get one. Beautiful. One more usage of trigonometry. And guess what from here you're going to be getting? You're going to be getting sine alpha plus beta. Of course, that is multiplied by square root of a squared plus b squared. But let's go ahead and divide both sides by that. And guess what? Here's the trick. Sine alpha plus beta will take two values on 0 to 2 pi, that interval. The only exception is 1 and negative 1. But obviously, the radical cannot be negative 1. So the only way out of this is to have or set this equal to 1. That's the only case where we're going to have one solution. And that means a squared plus b squared equals 1. And that's basically our solution. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it is in a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look at these beautiful graphs. Take a look at these equations. Look at the a and b values. Are there two solutions? Yes. We are looking for one solution or a single solution. Yes, we're looking for tangency. Take a look. What are these values? If you square them and add them up, 
you get 1, which means in order to get solutions, a squared plus b squared needs to be 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.